Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over another tragic tale from Reddit Cheating Stories. So without further ado, my wife has been caught cheating. Let me start with some background. My wife and I are both 54, married 31 years. She's an RN at a hospital. I work for a home builder since I'm 18. We have two children, both grown out of the house in their 20s. We decided in our mid-40s to pursue my wife's dream of running a bed and breakfast. We've been looking on and off for years. We came across a piece of property of five acres and a home built in the 1870s. The original owners were large landowners in this area. They had an extensive agricultural business empire. Over the decades, fewer of the family wanted to stay in farming. Parcels of land were sold off. Our town is going through growth spurts as it has become quite touristy because of some, let's say, natural formations and beauty. The farmland along the main highway is being gobbled up. The house and land we purchased is away from the highways. Since we bought it, my wife and I are redoing the entire house. There has been neglect and some basic maintenance, and we want to restore the house to its prominence of 150 years ago, along with making a living. My wife has been in charge of decorating rooms as I finish along with paying the mortgage. I am renovating room by room, paying for all material and any professional help if needed. I'm pretty handy, so most work is done by me. The last few years, the housing industry has gone through the roof. We would work eight days a week if we could. I was pulling in big money. Until last year, the pandemic knocked us out of work for a while in 2020. Then the material shortages started. Of course, my wife was on the front lines for the last 18 months. Last year, she worked weeks at the hospital without days off. The medical staff stayed at the hospital. They had rooms several slept in together. To say the least, the staff got very close. They worked four weeks on, two weeks off. Starting in March last year into the fall and then again after Thanksgiving. My wife has always, after the kids were older, worked for others if they asked. She watched these young parents crying because they could not see their families. So on their off time, she would give up her time off and offer to the staff that really needed it. There were others that did this too. The whole experience changed her. Watching people put on ventilators, the deaths, etc. She was not the same person. She was distant. Our bedroom life went to zero. I attributed it to her experiences or her age. I tried talking about it, but was told she just didn't feel it anymore. We still worked closely on the house. We planned trips to an area in our state that had a large Amish population. The Amish here are known for their craftsmanship in woodworking and sewing. We bought several pieces of furniture for the bedroom along with handmade quilts. This past weekend, we were planning on taking a three-day trip to this area to buy dining room furniture. I also pay and trade with some wood that I get when I take down an old barn, which I do as a side gig. Barn wood is very much in demand. My boss calls me and tells me everyone is working the whole week as he was able to get wood and shingles for a house that we've been sitting on, waiting for supplies. I told the wife we could go on Saturday and Sunday, on Friday morning, she tells me she's still going with some workers because there's a fall festival going on too. I go to a local bar that night. One of her co-workers comes up to say hello. I ask if she was going on the trip. She knew nothing about it. So I texted the wife asking if she made it okay and asked who was all there with her. She texted back that this friend, her other close friend, and a friend called Stevie. I had heard this name the last few months. Until then, I always thought she was female. I asked her friend at the bar if she knew this Stevie. She said no, but there is a Steven that works with them. So the wife gets back Sunday afternoon. She has bags of tablecloths, napkin, kitchen towels, etc. She's showing me what she bought. In one bag, there was a smaller bag. She pulled it out, looked in it, and said, Oh, not this bag. It's not for us. I let it go. Later, I looked in the bag. She had it hidden in a closet. It was decorations for a man cave for a college team. I don't follow sports, so it wasn't for me. I asked to talk to her. I asked again who all went. She gave me the same three people. I just asked who Stevie was because we had not met. She told me a woman they work with. I pulled out the man cave stuff and told her I talked to her friend, who was supposed to be away last week, but her plans blew up. Then I asked who Stevie was again. She started crying and told me who he was, and yes, they were by themselves. They had bedroom fun. They have been since the last year during their hospital lockdown. 
So now she's living in one of the finished bedrooms. I have our bedroom. I'll talk to a lawyer on Monday. I have no idea what to do about the house, the business, the marriage. To me, she was sorry she got caught, but not for the affair. I asked her if she would break it off with Stevie. She was not sure. Update. It's been a hectic couple of weeks. Along with my work and side gigs picking up, the wife and I were battling. I saw a lawyer. After I explained everything, he suggested we try to work it out before he gets involved. The house is still not a business and cannot be sold as such. We would have to sell it as a house, unfinished, which would lower the price. We've sunk well over $100,000 into the house, plus the mortgage. The lawyer will have to consult with a real estate attorney and maybe one dealing with businesses, so the fees are going to be high. So I try to approach the wife to see if we could talk. I don't know if she's embarrassed by being caught, but she has dug in her heels. She told me to leave the house. I told her I have no plans to do that. Then she countered with my giving up the master suite and me moving into the one of the bedrooms. I again tell her I don't plan on it either. She then says she's off the next couple of days and will move all my stuff out and put it in the foyer for me to decide where I'm going to stay. So I end the conversation. I went out where my supplies are stored and grabbed a new door lock with a push button keypad. I was going to install it on the bedroom doors once we had guests. We can change the combination after each guest. I installed it on the master suite door. The next day I went to work. When I came home after a day of angry messages for putting the lock on, she was livid. How dare you lock me out of my bedroom, was her war cry. After back and forth, I asked if we could please talk. She finally agreed. Later that evening, we sat down. I told her I was very hurt to find out about the affair, and that I wish she would have told me. She was not happy. She did not say anything. So I continued with that, as far as I'm concerned, the marriage is over. She just nodded her head. I then told her I have been to an attorney. This caught her by surprise by her look. I explained what the attorney had said, that it would be best if we could come to some agreement on what to do. Our largest asset is the house, and to sell it we would take a huge loss. She just smiled and said, I can prove that I have paid the mortgage, so the house is mine. I shook my head no. My attorney explained the house is a marital asset, both names on the mortgage. I then pulled out a couple of binders. I have every receipt that I have spent, filed by room, on what was spent. I started this just out of curiosity and kept going as we finished rooms. I can prove I spent thousands of my money in refurbishing the home. She was caught off guard by the receipts. She has not been to an attorney. I proposed that we live peacefully together, finish the house, we can then set up the B&B. She could then buy me out of the business at that time. She dug her heels in again. No, I need to leave. If not, she has plans to move Stephen in. This hurt like a witch. I got up and got a glass of water to collect my thoughts. When I came back to the table, I told her if I see him in this house or on the property, I would start disassembling everything that has been done. Every nail and every screw I put in I would take out. Every light and plumbing fixture would be taken down. I said I would not destroy them because I own them. I would replace them with any old piece of salvage material I could find. I said think about it. Consult with whoever is giving you dime store advice. Let me know. Yesterday she came to me. We had not talked in several days. She asked if we could talk again. She had talked with our kids. I had called each and told them what's going on. Our daughter suggested to her that we stay in the house to completion. Start the business as I suggested. Then maybe I could move out but still own 50%. Mom could run the business, bringing in an employee or two to help run the place, do yard work, give mom a day off. I told her I would think about it, but my stance on Steven will not change. So I have another appointment with my attorney. The big issue is, we will probably not be in business until 2023. The outside needs much work, along with landscaping. Plus we need to come up with a room for one of us to live in. The room I am in is part of the rooms for rent. TLDR, the marriage is over. Now it's how to come to separation without bankrupting us. Update 2 Sorry I haven't updated. I'm recovering from a stroke almost four months ago, and I'm just now getting back whole. My wife and I were discussing how we would split our assets. Our lawyer said it would be best if we came to some consensus. As we were talking, the stroke hit. I was sitting one second, then hit the floor. My wife is a registered nurse. 
Thank God she saw something wrong, and when she asked if I was all right, I hit the floor. She called 911 and told them I was having a stroke. I went to the hospital for a week, then to rehab. My wife had taken a leave to care for me when I got home. I don't think I would have recovered near as well without her. She went back to work in January. When she left, I felt I could manage somewhat by myself. Our kids stop over when she works her 12-hour shifts, though. Don't know if she is still seeing Stevie, because she spent two months by my side. However, she has taken a couple three-day holidays away, so I think that may still be going on. Right now, divorce talk has been pushed to the side. Thank you for those asking for updates and the many DMs asking where I was. I am on the mend. I have some issues walking, so going back to work is out of the question. I may have to come up with something else. Update 3. I hope it's the last one. Sorry I haven't updated. I know many have asked. First I want to say how much I appreciated all the support, especially from those on PM. There were multiple chats that showed real concern for me and let me use them as a sounding board. On to the update. I've filed for divorce. I was starting to waver. I think because of my health issue I stopped seeing the whole issue. The soon-to-be ex-wife was very kind and nurturing to me in recovery. Once I was back on my feet, taking care of myself, I started realizing things. Soon-to-be ex-wife took weekends away once or twice a month. The kids would visit to help out. Now I realized she was going to Stevie's place or going away with him. The kids got clued in right away. My daughter has been all over soon-to-be ex-wife. Their relationship is now nil. That is a shame. My son disapproves but has not cut ties. We discuss divorce, dividing assets. It'll be amicable. Neither of us can buy the other out. We listed the place with a business broker. I guess that's what to call him. He found a company, I think VRBO, Airbnb, to give us a great offer. So we will divorce and move when it's finalized in a month or two. The sale will go through then. My health is not all the way back and probably never will be. I have a great boss who is working with me as I grow into this new role as a project manager for him. Thanks for all the support. Absolutely disgusting. All it took was a couple of nights sleeping in the same room, and she threw away 31 years. Let us know what you think about this down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications, and stay tuned for more stories. Until next time.